I had somebody the other day ask me a question regarding brazing and some of these other methods such as soft soldering and stay bright and all these different ways of attaching copper to copper lines. What's the best way to do it? I'm going to give you my opinion on this and I'm also going to give you where I think the future of the industry is going on this, but we're going to wait until the end of the video to go into all of that. First, let's talk about actual brazing versus soft soldering. And I will say that we're going to just stay residential in this talk. So if you're a homeowner, we're only talking residential here. I'm not going to be going into some of the instances in commercial atmospheres or industrial atmospheres, guys in our trade that they do it one way or the other. We're only talking about residential here. And I think that's important to mention because there are some pros and cons here when we're talking about especially soft soldering. Now, I'm not going to get into brands, but I'm going to just strictly talk general ideas here, one versus the other. I know there are guys out there that will say, well, yeah, but I use this brand or this way of doing it. I think in general, if we're talking about soft solder versus brazing, there is some main pros and cons here. And mainly, I want to focus on the fact that if you're going to be soft soldering, that they have to flux the pipe. It has to be done correctly. It has to be cleaned. And I know guys will say, well, yeah, but if you're going to be brazing, you need to be cleaning and all that too. But if we're talking about flux in general as a product, a lot of that causes acidity in the refrigeration lines, the flow of the refrigerant and the system itself, that acidity can cause breakdowns and a deterioration of certain parts of that system as time goes on. So, you know, you don't want to be introducing things to that system when you are doing things like flux. And the other thing I want to mention about soft solder is guys that are really good at it, it is somewhat of an art, if you will, just like a lot of the things in our trade. But if you have somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing or they're not as good at it, then it can cause even more challenges. A lot of guys will say, well, yeah, but when you're brazing, especially if you're not brazing with an inert gas, you're not doing things properly. You're looking at things like oxidation of that system, you know, getting on that copper line and causing all these issues. But a lot of guys that do soft soldering, if they don't know what they're doing or they're not doing a very good job, that alone can introduce all kinds of things to that system that it shouldn't. We already talked about flux, but just the fact that soft solder itself can get in there, all this junk and crap that gets in the system, it gets in the metering devices and the filter dryers and so on. I have actually opened metering devices before that were soft soldered and there be a buildup of all kinds of stuff in there. And I think you can already see the writing on the wall here. We're obviously pointing out all the challenges when we're talking about soft soldering and all of these other ways of doing it. Brazing is a better joint in a lot of cases. And I know guys will talk about pressures and vibrations. Bottom line is if you're comparing one joint to the other, one is stronger and then that's brazing. So if you're doing brazing and you're doing it properly and you're flowing an inert gas properly, avoiding the oxidation and all the things that can happen when you are brazing, Brazing is the better joint here. And the other thing I want to point out here is manufacturers, all manufacturers, I believe, now I could be wrong. You might be able to throw one out there. Somebody might comment on this video and I might have missed one or two, but of all the plethora of manufacturers out there, they all say brazing is what they want done. They want it to be properly installed with good brazing practices. And so if you're comparing one or the other, to me, that is the biggest thing. If you've got a heating and air guy in your home and he's talking about how he's going to be soft soldering, don't take my word for it. Get other opinions. Get more quotes from guys in your market, other folks in your market that do this work and get their opinion on the matter. I think you'll find out regardless of that one guy, we always see one guy on social media, that 10% of guys that think soft soldering is the way to go. And they'll almost always say the same thing. They'll probably comment on this video and say the same thing. Here's what they'll say. It's just as good. And I've never had a problem. That's what they'll always say. Bottom line is get other opinions. I think you'll find out one has the majority of opinions on one side. And so to wrap up, as I said, I would give my opinion on this. I think it's pretty obvious. I think brazing is the way to go. I think you should get other opinions. If you're getting someone that is saying that they're going to be soft soldering, get other opinions from guys in our trade. I think right now that 
brazing is the best way to do it. But my other opinion on this matter is as time goes on, I think there's going to be better ways of doing this anyway. I think as we look to the future, we're going to be seeing better ways of doing this, better practices, better technologies. We already see a lot of compression, all these tools coming out that can connect copper with these fittings that are designed to do such. We already see many splits on the market that are using flaring copper technology. As long as it's done properly with tools to measure the torque and so on. I think as time goes on, there's a good chance that we're going to see these antiquated ways of doing things possibly be phased out by the manufacturers if no one else. But that's my opinion. What's your opinion on this matter? Have you had someone tell you that they think soft soldering is the way to go? I'd love to hear about that. Comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about three secrets to diagnosing HVAC problems. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.